today's learning intention is drawing graphs of derivatives. And essential skills are that you know the derivative is the gradient of a function and you know how to sketch functions. Now, as you notice, we've kind of moved away now from National 5 essential skills. And as we're working through higher, we're now building on previous experience. These are essential skills that you've learned through the higher course. We're now having to apply a skill we have learned. Let's get started then. So graphs of derivatives. So when plotting a der derived graph, we need to analyze the gradient of the function as it changes along the x-axis. I want to know where is it positive? Where is the function increasing? Where is it negative? Where is the function decreasing? And where is it zero? Where are the stationary points located? Now to get started, you would draw your usual coordinate axes. The x-axis is a horizontal axis, but the y-axis is now the derivative f dash of x is labeled on the y-axis. So you're plotting the gradient of a graph. What does that mean then? Well, a positive derivative is plotted above the x-axis. It's got a positive value. A negative derivative, a negative gradient, is plotted below the x-axis, negative areas. And our stationary points now become roots of our derived graph. Let's try an example. Example 1. Draw the derived graph of this quadratic function. Okay, let's have a look at the quadratic function. I want you to analyse the gradient. You're going from left to right along the x-axis. What's the gradient doing? Well, it's decreasing. I've got a negative gradient. The function's decreasing. I've then got a minimum turning point. The gradient equals zero. And then that function starts increasing again. I've got a positive gradient. So I've got a negative gradient a gradient equal to zero and a positive gradient. Now directly under a graph, I then plot the derived graph. So I put out my coordinate axes, I label it x and f dash x. Okay. I'm then going to take my turning point and that becomes a root. I draw a line going down. Then I think to myself, what's going on? Well, before that root, the graph is negative. Then after that root, the graph is positive, the gradient's positive. So negative is below the x-axis, positive is above the x-axis, so it's going to go negative, zero, positive. So negative, zero, positive. What does that look like? That just looks like a straight line. So in this example, the derived graph of a quadratic function is a linear function. Now remember, when you differentiate a quadratic, you get a linear function. So it's no surprise then that the derived graph of a quadratic function is going to be linear. Example two, draw the derived graph of this cubic function. So here's a cubic function. Now there's no um, x values on it. There's no turning points on it. It doesn't matter. We're just looking at the shape. So we analyze the gradient, what's going on from left to right across the, this graph. I have got a positive gradient, the function's increasing. The gradient then goes to zero, I've got a maximum turning point. The gradient becomes negative, the function decreases. I then got a minimum turning point where the gradient equals zero. And then the function's increasing again, I've got a positive gradient. So the gradient goes positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. So right underneath this graph, I'm going to plot the derived graph. I'm going to match up my axis with the axis of the cubic function, but I've labelled it this time f dash x and x. So I'm going to have to go positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. So first of all, I'm going to put down my roots. So remember the turning points become roots. That's where derived function cuts the x-axis. Positive means I'm above the x-axis. So we're going to be above, cuts the x-axis, Below, cuts the x-axis and above the x-axis. Above, below and above again, cutting twice at these new stationary points, these new roots. So that follows the path of a quadratic. 
So the derived graph of a cubic function is a quadratic function, and that's fine, because we know when we find the derivative of a cubic function, we do get a quadratic function. Example 3. Draw the derived graph of this quartic function. Something a bit fancier now. So here's the function for you. So first of all, again, analyse the gradient, what's going on. It is a negative gradient, the function's decreasing. It reaches a minimum turning point, gradient equals zero. The function increases, gradient's positive. And then we've got a maximum turning point, gradient equals zero. The function decreases again. And I've got another minimum turning point with the gradient equals zero, and the function increases again. So I've got negative gradient, zero, positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. I want to plot the derived graph. Right underneath, I'm going to put my axis in. I've labelled it f dash x for derivative and x along the horizontal axis. The important points to anchor down are our roots. So our stationary points become roots of our derived function. So I'm going to plot them down. That's where my derived graph is going to cut the x-axis. Now remember, negative is below the x-axis in derived function. Positive is above the x-axis in derived function. So I've got to go negative, zero, positive, negative, zero, positive. So I'm below negative, cuts the x-axis positive. Oh, that was a bit quick, wasn't it? Positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. So that looks like a cubic. So the derived graph of a quartic function, that's x to the power four, is a cubic function, x to the power three. And that's what we expect. We know that when we find the derivative, we go down by one on the power. Try these examples on your own. Draw the derived functions of the following graphs. You can pause me, take your time, follow the exact same way, and come back and check your answers. Okay, there you go, double check your answers. Remember, the first thing you should have done is analyse the gradient. The first example on the left hand side, it was negative zero, positive zero, negative zero, positive. You anchor down your turning points, become roots of the derived function. Okay, and then you can draw it in. Now, you should be able to look at that first one and know that's a quartic function. So you're going to get something that looks like a cubic. Okay, and the same on the right hand side. It's a quartic, becomes a cubic. Now it's time to self assess your progress. How did you get on today? Um, drawing derived functions. Red, amber or green. Remember if you're red, you need to come and talk to your teacher. So what have we learned today? Well, we learned how to draw derived functions. Key steps, a derived graph is a graph of the derivative. First of all, we analyse the gradient of your given function. Increasing equals positive gradient, f dash x is above the x-axis. Decreasing equals negative gradient, f dash x is below the x-axis. And stationary points equal zero gradient and they become the roots of your derived graph.